Hey guys, so this last couple of weeks we've been focusing on Smith Lake in Alabama. Um, I don't know a lot about the lake. It's hard to fish. It's so deep and it's so clear and it's full of spots. Um, there's tons of largemouth in there too. I have never caught largemouth at Smith. Um, but spotted bass, they're pretty easy to find for the most part. Uh, and like usual, they like eating crawfish and they like eating shad. And one of the baits that I really like to use a lot, and uh, I love profound lures and outdoors. And uh, this is a Azuma. I think it's called, a, I think it's called a Z Boss. But anyway, it's a nine to 12 foot deep. It's small. I don't know if you can see this. But it's like two inches long, but it goes up to 12 foot deep. And actually, I think it goes deeper. It's according to how you use it. Um, I like to use it on either fluorocarbon or I got some hybrid line here from Missouri. And it's all eaten up with rocks because that is all that uh, Smith Lake has to offer is rocks pretty much in timber. Um, pretty much wheel down hit those points I reel down or either on those flats around those ledges as hard as I can I get it down there and then I mean I'm slow like I can just feel this bait wobbling like that right there and uh, if I hit something I stop the boat that bait floats up just a little bit and I start again um, and it's usually whenever I go down and I'm either going really slow or whenever I hit something and I stop, that there's whenever that bite hits. And that's my favorite bait. I can cover a lot of, uh, uh, just a lot of bank, a lot of points. Like, I mean, you're fishing crankbaits, you're gonna cover cover a lot of stuff. Uh, Cause you got more throws. Uh, this is something I've learned there that's worked really well for me. Um, I like to use shake or wobble heads. I don't know if you can see that. And uh, this is a pretty light one. It's probably like a, I don't know, 3 sixteenths to quarter ounce wobble head. And I like to use crawls a lot. And I mean, I literally just do this as slow as I can. Like I want to feel it going over the rock and it's worked out several times for me it's hard i mean you're just pretty much those fish that water is so clear they see everything and on top of that they can feel it too i mean any kind of little, little stuff that happens here they're gonna feel that in the water but you put a scent on there um i i like to use bang uh, but pretty much you're just working it over those rocks, over all that stuff that's in there. They see it, and you're working it so slow, you're keeping it right there in that that place where they know that they can hit it with no problem. They grab it. Um, one thing is, I always try to make sure whenever I put my hook on there, it lines up, and I barely do the tip of the hook, just to where it's not showing. That keeps it a little bit more lead, weedless. Uh, so if it's turning sideways and stuff, it'll just crawl over rocks, just like that, and I'll get hooked. Um, but whenever they bite it, they get the hook in them. Um, always, always keep a Texas rig hooked up. <clears throat> One thing with my Texas rigs, is especially when I'm fishing crawls, uh, sometimes with worms, but with crawls, I always try to put beads in there. They're cheap, easy to apply, uh, and basically, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's rattling just a little bit. So every time I kind of bounce that bait around like that, uh, it's making a little clicking noise. They hear it, they see it. Um, again, same thing, straight. 
you want your bait to have a good presentation um, like it's supposed to be there and I just barely hook it up underneath the skin just like that just so there you're not getting hung as much on brush uh, rocks this and that it turns around sideways whatever it's not getting hooked because just like I'm doing right there I mean I'm not getting hooked it's just flowing over the top of it whenever that fish bites it boom there's that hook set their mouth and their their mouth hits right here and then you're setting the hook another one that I love to use there uh, cause they do love um, man they they love hitting shad and they've got a specific kind of shad there I can't remember the name of it but uh, but it has blue in it so anything that you can find fishing smith that has just a hint of blue and you want to keep it small um, in my opinion if you're, especially if you're trying to catch spots but whenever you can use you know pretty much something that's a swim bait especially something small uh i got it. right here i think it's like a i don't know a 3 16 weight uh fluke rig but it's you pretty much crawl this or you can swim it you can jerk it up let it fall and that tail is just going to just go at it so uh i've had a lot of luck there with these and it creates a lot of water motion disturbance in the water and you know that attracts their attention again you go the same way you know whenever you're hooking it you want to bend that bait so you want it sitting like this so you want to bend it up like that right there you want to put that hook in you want to hide that tip and that's the same thing. You're, there's so many rocks there. I broke off probably about seven times the last time I fished. And it's just because any little nook and cranny you can get into, as far as those rocks go, and they're sharp, it's going to break it off. Uh, it's going to cut this line. Uh, but if a fish, if you like this, and it's just floating, and this part of the line gets underneath the rock, and the fish grabs it up here, and you go jerk it it's going to cut that line. Um, so anything you can do to keep that from happening, try. Uh, and it's hard. In Smith Lake, you've got to use lighter line. It's so clear. Even though it had rained for like five days straight, the water was so clear, it was insane. So you want to make sure that it looks as natural as possible. Again, you know, these fish are smart. But at the same time, they're fish. They got a brain that big, and uh, all they're looking for is an easy meal. So, hope y'all enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. Hope I learned more because we didn't catch as many fish as I wanted to. That's the reason. All right, guys. So we're here, at Smith Lake. It's uh, February twenty fifth. Uh, just rained a ton. I mean a ton. Not just a little bit. I mean a ton. Uh, so, I don't really know what to even think at this point. Uh, try to get... <clears throat> the water is actually a lot more clear than I thought it would be. To be honest with you. We're just going to fish the points, try to find some spots. Uh, and, uh, hopefully find some bait fish somewhere.
All right. So what I'm trying to do is get somewhat of a pattern on these fish. First good fish I caught was in about 16 to 18 foot of water next to a whole bunch of limestone chunk rock off of a point. I'm using a Carolina rig with a crawl and just working it extremely methodically. And, uh, we're going to keep trying to see if we can get a bite. Try these places, see if they're all in the same kind of atmosphere. Bait fish back here. And I just had a hit off this jerk bait. I don't know how I missed it. Oh, 
much, but I dang good and heck yeah, dude. Man, that was actually gonna be my last cast of the day. <laughs> I knew a spot with holding fish, it had to. All right, well, we can call it. I got three decent areas. Some different ways of fishing them. Basically, I like the Carolina rig a lot. The crawl on it. Um, I caught two on crankbaits today, and then uh, also caught one. Uh, or I had a bite on the uh, shaky head. So that's gonna be our plan for tomorrow. I hope it works out. I hope the guys keep baits in the water and keep their heads up. It's gonna be really cold. Uh, it warmed up a little bit today. I don't know that it's going to tomorrow. The wind to hold off, it'll help. But we're gonna go after it and see what we can't do. Thanks.